In this video, we're going to take a look at orthogonal projections of vectors. Right? So a key step in many uh, vector problems, and particularly in applications of, of them, is the following. Um, the key step is that we want to write a vector u as a sum of two vectors. Uh, one that is parallel, meaning it points in the same direction, to a given vector v. Um, and another um, orthogonal. to this ve given vector v. And so what we're going to do is we're going to give this first vector, the one that's parallel to v, we're going to give this one a name. We're going to call this the projection of u onto v. Right? And we're going to denote it using the um, the symbol or the the um, the text proj, a subscript of v followed by the vector u. So this is the projection of u onto v. So let's start with drawing a picture of this situation. So in this case, I ha I start with my vector u. Um, so I'm going to draw a vector u here. So this will be my vector u. And I need to be given some vector v. This is some important direction that I want to, to note. Now typically this is going to be horizontal or vertical, although it doesn't have to be, but in, in physics and engineering context they're usually, you're breaking this up into horizontal and vertical components. So I'm going to draw in this picture of v being the horizontal vector. All right. so this is my vector v. Now I do, of course, now that I have the two vectors and I made them at the same terminal point intentionally because now I have my angle between them, that's theta. And so what we're going to do is, um, is think about the, um, having a light that shines directly above vector u and shines vertically down. If I had a light above u that shined down, it would cast a shadow along vector v. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw this dotted red line. The tip of that vector u would, the shadow would end directly below it on v. And so the vector that has the same initial point as u with the terminal point at that, sort of the, the tip of that shadow, that is going to be what we define to be the projection of u onto v. That's the angle that we're, that is the um, vector that we're looking for, right? And then the angle that makes the third, or the vector that makes up the third side of that triangle um, will be u minus that projection vector. And so if we, if we denote in the picture the projection and u minus the projection as follows, we see that u is in fact the sum of these two vectors. And I've made, um, so I've written u as the sum of two vectors. The one vector, the red vector, the projection vector is parallel to v, meaning it's in the same direction as v. And the other one is orthogonal to that, to v. All right, it's orthogonal to that projection. Right? And so this is the picture of, of the situation that we are in. So now looking at this triangle with the sides that we have labeled, um, we know that the cosine of theta from right triangle trigonometry is going to be the adjacent side length of the triangle 
So that'll be the magnitude of the projection of u onto v divided by the hypotenuse of the triangle, which will be the magnitude of u. Right? So if our goal is to figure out how to compute the projection, we can use uh, this formula appropriately rearranged. Right? So the magnitude of the vector, of this projection vector, is going to be the magnitude of u times the cosine of, of angle theta. Um, but from the previous theorem that we had that involved the dot product and cosine um, of the angle between them, we know that the cosine of theta is u dot v divided by the magnitude of u and the magnitude of v. So this is just using the previous fact that we've justified. Right? So now, of course, the magnitudes of u's will cancel. And so we have that this is just u dot v divided by the magnitude of v. So we now know the magnitude of this projection vector. Right? Remember, um, a, a, a vector is just a magnitude and a direction. So if we know both of those things, then we can figure out how to write down the vector. And so the magnitude of this projection vector is this number here. It's the dot product of the vector u and the direction vector v divided by that magnitude of vector v. And so if we know the magnitude of the vector, we can find the vector itself by multiplying a unit vector, one with length one, in that direction by the length. And so if I want a unit vector in the direction of v, we know how to do that. We're going to take the vector v and we're going to divide it by its magnitude. Right, so v, the vector v divided by magnitude of v is a unit vector that points in the same direction as v. And then I want to make this vector um, have the same magnitude as the projection that we've just computed. So we're going to multiply this by u dot v divided by magnitude of v. So we're going to scale that vector. And so what we get is we get a scalar out front here. It's going to be u dot v divided by the magnitude of v squared all times vector v. And this is a formula that then helps us find the projection of u onto v. Once we know u and v, we can compute their dot product. We can compute the magnitude of v. And then we can scale vector v by that appropriate constant. Okay. Um, we will do an example of this, but before we move on, I do want to point out that in the picture here, I did draw this because because this calculation was based on this picture. Um, the picture was drawn so that the angle between u and v was an acute angle. It was this angle theta that looks maybe like 45 degrees in the picture I drew. So you might wonder, what if v was pointing in the opposite direction? What if theta was actually bigger than pi over 2 radians? And it turns out that if that were the case, if u and v had an, an angle between them that was bigger than a right angle, an obtuse angle, this formula would still hold. The justification would be a little off. There'd be some negative signs involved. Uh, but those would all cancel out um, and work just fine. Um, but this formula that I have in the blue box at the bottom of the slide would still uh, continue to be accurate even if theta was bigger than pi over 2. So let's look at an example of computing uh, this projection. So let's let u be the vector uh, 4, negative 1, 3. And v the vector negative 3, 0, 1. Okay. So what we would like to do is we'd like to express u 
as a sum of two vectors. Uh, one that's parallel to V. And one orthogonal to V. Right, so what we've just developed is that we want to compute the projection of u onto v. That will be the, the first vector that I'm looking for. And then the second vector, the orthogonal one, we can just compute u minus that projection. Okay. So in order to use the projection, I need to know uh, the dot product of u and v and the magnitude of v. Right, so u dot v will be negative 12 plus 0 plus 3, so negative 9. The magnitude of v will be the square root of 9 plus 0 plus 1, so square root of 10. And so our projection vector of u onto v is going to be um, the dot product of u dot v over the magnitude of v squared, all times vector v. So when we put in all of our, our values here, this becomes negative 9 over the square root of 10 squared. So that'll be negative 9 tenths uh, times vector v, which is negative 3, 0, and 1. So our projection will be... Uh, 27 tenths, 0, and negative 9 tenths. Okay. So this vector here will be the one that we want that is parallel to V. And then to find one that is perpendicular, we want to do U minus this projection. So 4, negative 1, 3, minus 27 tenths, 0, negative 9 tenths. And this produces um, 13 tenths, negative 1, and 39 tenths. And this vector will be orthogonal to v. So I'll leave it to you to check that these two vectors um, added together do produce vector u. Although if you look at the very bottom line here, that's, that, that is obvious that that will happen. As well as the fact that this vector, um, this last vector that I came up with, um, 13 tenths, negative 1, and 39 tenths, is actually orthogonal to v. You can check that by taking the dot product of that vector with v and hopefully get zero. But of course, from our um, development of this formula, the u minus the projection will be um, orthogonal automatically as long as we don't make any calculational mistakes along the way. Um, but they can always be checked and confirmed using the dot product.